let's understand how to use timer 1 of this 8 mega microcontroller and we shall be using overflow feature of this timer 1. Timer 1 of this microcontroller is of 16 bits that means this timer can be incremented from 0 to 2 to the power 16. As you can see here this timer or counter 1 register is having size of 16 bits or 2 bytes. So this counter value can be incremented from 0 to 65535 which is 2 to the power 16. Next we have to decide the clock frequency for this. Let's say this is your system clock and in case of this microcontroller which is sitting over this development board will be running with 16 megahertz. So this clock frequency is 16 megahertz and there is a feature with the help of which you can reduce the frequency for timer. If you divide by 8 so there will be a register so by setting there you can divide this clock frequency by 8 and that will be used for timer 1 and with this timing your timer 1 or counter 1 will be incremented. 16 megahertz divided by 8 will be equals to 2 megahertz. So this timer 1 will be running with 2 megahertz and this is the register with the help of which you can configure the pre-scaler which will decide the clock frequency for timer 1. So here 3 bits you see right these are clock slack bits with the help of these 3 bits you can decide the clock frequency for timer 1 or counter 1. If these are 0 so in that case your timer 1 will be stopped it will not be running at all. If you divide by 1 so there is no pre-scaling we are doing here so same 16 megahertz will be used here and if this value is 2 0 1 0 so here the clock frequency will be divided by 8 here the pre-scaler value is 8 so 16 divided by 8 equals to 2 megahertz and if you use this it will be 16 divided by 64 megahertz which will be 1 by 4 megahertz so similarly you can configure till this 1024 that's how you can reduce the clock frequency for timer 1 don't see this now I can explain this later. So we have to use now only for the pre-scaling purpose. So let's say your clock frequency is 16 megahertz and you are using the pre-scaler of 64 or 256. So here I am using 256. So your timer 1 clock will be 16 divided by 256 megahertz which will be 1 by 16 right 1 by 16 megahertz. So to convert from frequency to the time period you have to just make it ultra so 1 by 16 megahertz it will be time period will be 16 microsecond time period equals to 1 divided by frequency so same thing i have done here so the time period will be 16 microsecond so for one clock it is taking 16 microsecond and suppose we want to wait for one second then how many such clocks will be required so for one second it will be required this much and how I got this value simple 1 second divided by 16 microsecond so that will come 10 to the power 6 divided by 16 and if you calculate it will come this value so for 1 second we need this much clocks so which tells our timer should be incremented for these many times 62,500 times our timer should be incremented to elapse 1 second time and we are aware that this timer 1 can be incremented from 0 to 65,535. So if our timer starts from this value 2 to the power 16 minus this value which comes 3035. If we load our timer with this value then the counting will be a start and it will reach to 2 to the power 16 then the overflow will happen right. Once it reaches to the maximum then the timer overflow will happen. So after doing this we have to enable interrupt for what? We have to enable interrupt for timer overflow. Once our timer reaches to the maximum value then this overflow interrupt will be triggered for us. So we have to use this register timer or counter 1 interrupt mask register which will configure the interrupt for timer overflow interrupt enable so this bit is timer overflow interrupt enable so after making that will enable this bit so that we can execute the interrupt routine on the overflow so we have to do these many steps first step is 
preload the timer with value 3035 so that it can reach up to the maximum value in one second. And second step we have to do, we have to select the pre-scaler value in the control register. So this pre-scaler value will decide the clock frequency for the timer one. So here it will be 16 megahertz divided by 256. And finally what we have to do, we have to enable the interrupt for overflow. Timer will overflow once it reaches to the maximum value. So these many things we have to do. So let's proceed and write a simple code for this. So first thing we have to do, preload the timer. So TCNT timer counter 1, we have to load with 3035, right? So preload is done with 3035 to elapse one second on overflow, right? Once it reaches to the maximum value, this timer reaches to the maximum value, it will elapse one second of delay. Then second thing we have to select the clock source. Select the clock source. So how we have to select? We can select with the control register. TCC R timer and counter control register 1. A value keep it 0. So that let it be 0 and timer and counter control register 1 B. So here only we have to configure right. So and it was LSB 3 bits. LSB 3 bits. For 256 what we have to select? We have to select 100. 100 means 4. 0 cross 0 4. So I have selected 100 pre scalar pre scalar equals to 256 and select 100. So this is done. And third step is we have to enable the interrupt mask register. So for that what we have to do? Enable interrupt for timer 1 overflow so for that we have to enable timer mask register right 1 timer mask register 1 and we have to enable the 0th bit only so we have enabled this let's do one thing before this just clear the interrupt so for clear we can use this and just no interrupts and after enabling this overflow then we can enable the interrupts right so for that just enable the interrupt enable the interrupts so this is done so now whenever this timer tcnt1 reaches to the maximum value 2 to the power 16 this timer overflow routine will be executed this timer overflow routine will be executed once this timer counter 1 reaches to the maximum value and let's preload again the same thing over here timer counter 1 3035 so again it will set to the 3035 and from here again the counting will start and it will reach to the maximum and then it will trigger interrupt overflow and this routine will be executed again and this loop will be continued and for our understanding let's blink the led also pin mode 13 13th pin is connected to the onboard led just i am configuring that as output and blink the LED. So for blinking what we can do this is connected to the pin B 7th pin. So simply what I am doing I am writing 1 over there so this will blink the LED. If we write pin B 7th pin it will blink that. Okay our programming is done let me connect my board and run now. I am connecting now yeah. uh, it's connected you can see USB it is connected now let me compile this okay there is some error okay these has marks are not used here we, we have to use this one as a comment this is embedded c not python okay this is done and it has compiled successfully let me download this code yeah it has been downloaded now and if you see this led it is blinking for one second delay for one second it is on and one second it is off and that's what we wanted here right okay so this is done and we have successfully blinked the LED with one second delay using timer one and simple feature overflow we have explored in this video. Let's continue and explore the different feature of this timer one in next session. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.